So in this video, I want to go into more depth about how the electrons are actually arranged in atoms. It's a lot more complicated than what we've done or talked about before. So we're going to talk about principal energy levels, something called sublevels, and finally orbitals. So first of all, we have what are called the principal energy levels. These are sort of the diagrams that are drawn on the board in a typical Bohr model. And so the, the, the first energy level is the one that's closest to the nucleus. It has the lowest energy. So electrons will always try and arrange themselves with the lowest energy possible. So if an atom has an electron, the first electron will go into that first energy level, which is called, you know, number is n equals 1. And on your periodic table, if you look at your periodic table, the horizontal rows or periods actually reflect these principal energy levels. So there are a total of seven different rows on your periodic table, and so there are seven different principal energy levels. Now, how many electrons does each energy level hold? Well, here's the answer. The first energy level, the one closest to the nucleus, so the nucleus is in red in this diagram, holds a maximum of two electrons, then it's full. And you can see that in your periodic table, if you look at it, you just have hydrogen and helium in that row. The second energy level, principal energy level, holds a total of eight electrons. And if you look at the second period or second row in the periodic table, there are a total of eight elements. The third principal energy level can hold actually 18 electrons maximum, and the fourth can hold 32, and it keeps going 32, 32 after that. Now, this is where it starts getting a little complicated. So if you look at the diagram, the orange are the principal energy levels. So you look at the bottom, we're just showing th four principal energy levels, N1, N2, N3, and N4. But the principal energy levels can be subdivided into what are called sublevels. So there are different types of sublevels. There are what we call as S sublevels, which are in red. There are P sublevels, which are in green, D sublevels, which are blue, and F sublevels, which are purple. So if you look at the first principal energy level, it has only one sublevel, and it is an S sublevel. The second principal energy level, if you look in the big black circle there, you can see that that is split into two sublevels. So the second, e, second energy, principal energy level is subdivided into two sublevels an S and a P. The third principal energy level is subdivided into three sublevels, an S, P, and D. <coughs> Excuse me. And the fourth principal energy level is subdivided into four sublevels, an S, P, D, and F. Okay, you really need to get your periodic table out in front of you, so you might want to pause the video right now and just get your periodic table out as I talk about this. Okay, so the diagram over on the left is another atom model again. The black dot is the nucleus. The gray areas represent principal energy levels. So there is the first principal energy level here. And if you look at that, it has one sublevel, and that holds a total of two electrons. So you can fit a total of two electrons on the first energy level, and both of those are going in an S sublevel. Now, actually, let's just pause for a second and look at the key, because I want to sort of explain to you how many electrons can fit in each sublevel. So an S sublevel can hold two electrons, a P sublevel can hold six, a D can hold ten, and an F sublevel can hold fourteen electrons. Okay, so now let's go to the second principal energy level. And if you look at the diagram, there's an 8 there. That means there are a total of 8 electrons in the second principal energy level. And they are subdivided into two sublevels. There are, is an S sublevel, which holds 2 electrons, and a P sublevel that holds 6. So now look at your period table. Look at the second row, or second period. That's lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So that second row rec represents the second principal energy level. So can you see how it's broken into two parts? You have the S sublevel, which corresponds to the electrons for lithium and beryllium, and then you have the P sublevel, which is boron across to neon. 
And so if you count, you can actually see group from boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. There's six elements there. So each of those is an electron. So those represent the six electrons that are sitting in the P sublevel in the second principal energy level. Now, if you look at the third principal energy level here, it has a big 18. The third principal energy level is broken into three sublevels. An S sublevel that holds two electrons, a P sublevel that holds six, and a D sublevel that holds 10. Now, this is confusing when you look at your periodic table because when you look at the third row, you just see eight electrons. You see, like, from the, I'm talking about sodium across to argon. Like you can see the two, the um, sodium and magnesium represent the S sublevel, so there's two electrons there. And then aluminum to argon represent the P sublevel, but where is that D sublevel? Well, I'll explain that. Now, the sublevels themselves contain what we're going to call orbitals. Orbitals. So we're subdividing the sublevels. I know it's getting complicated. Now, what is an orbital? Well, an orbital is just an area of space around the nucleus that holds two electrons. So an orbital holds a maximum of two electrons. Now, each sub S sublevel has one orbital, which so that's why sub an S sublevel holds two electrons. Each P sublevel has three orbitals. So three, that means a total of six electrons, because three times two is six electrons. Each D sublevel has five orbitals, so it can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. And finally, an F sublevel has seven orbitals. Now, the way we represent orbitals is in the bottom diagram on the page here, those little boxes. So each little square represents an orbital. So if you go and look at the first, uh, we, if we're looking over on the left, you can see that the 1S, that's the 1 stands for the first principal energy level, and the S stands for the sublevel, and the box above is the orbital. Then you have the second principal energy level, and you can see that that is subdivided into an S, a 2S, and a 2P. So there are two sublevels in the second principal energy level. The 2s has one orbital, so there's one box, but the 2p sublevel is divided into three orbitals, so there are three boxes, and so on and so on. So if you go look at the blue 3d sublevel, it has five boxes because there are five orbitals. <coughs> now, this diagram is of your periodic table, and it kind of explains how it's laid out. So it is really, really worth looking at your periodic table and then looking at this diagram so you understand it. And this is key. This is going to be absolute key because you can have your periodic table on any test or quiz. And so if you know where the sublevels are, and you can work this out. So it start off at the first uh, period or first row. You can see that they are the 1s, hydrogen and helium. Their electrons go in the 1s sublevel. Then when you come down to the next period, the lithium and beryllium are in the 2s. And then all the electrons from boron to neon are in the 2p. Then after the 2p, you come back to the 3s, which is sodium and magnesium. Then you jump across to the 3p, which is aluminum to argon. Then you come back to the fourth period or fourth row. And that's starting off with potassium and calcium. So they're in the 4S. And then something interesting happens. From the 4S, you go into the 3D. So scandium, which is SC, all the way across to zinc, ZN. All of those atoms, electrons, are in the 3D sublevel. Then after the 3D, you go back to the 4P. Then after the 4P, it's the 5S. And then it's the 4D then the 5p, and then if we come to uh, cesium element uh, 55, CS symbol, you're now in the 6s. And then after the 6s, you jump down to the purple, you go to the 4f, you fill the 4f, then it's the 5d, then the 6p, and then 7s, 
5F, 6D, and 7P. So this gives you the different blocks of the periodic table and the order in which the electrons are filled in. So if you remember earlier, I said to you that the third principal energy level has three sublevels, an S, a P, and, and a D. And now you can see that. Now it's kind of weird because you, you think, why don't they just put the 3D up in the third period? Well, the reason we do that is because in actual fact, you fill up with 3S first, then you fill up with 3P, and then electrons get in, put into the 4S sublevel before electrons get put into 3D. That's just the way that they get filled up. And I'll show you a diagram of why this is. So remember, electrons are being arranged in an atom to get the lowest possible energy. The lowest possible energy. So it happens that the 4S sublevel has lower energy than the 3D sublevel. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so this, en this energy diagram reflects that. So down the bottom is the lowest energy. So this gives you the order in which the sublevels are filled. So you can see you fill the red uh, 1S first. And then once that first principal energy level is filled, you move to the second principal energy level. You fill the 2S sublevel, then the 2P sublevel. That's completely filled. You can see it on the periodic table. And then you go to the third principal energy level, which is an orange. You fill the 3S, then the 3P. Now, if you look at the diagram, you'll notice that the 3D is high has a higher energy than the 4s so electrons actually start filling the 4s sublevel before they go to the 3d and so that's why elements potassium and calcium on your periodic table are in the 4s and then as soon as you jump to element 21 which is scandium you're now back into the 3d so this kind of gives you the order in which electrons are added to atoms or which the order in which the sublevels are filled. So just to remind you, what is an orbital? Well, an orbital is uh, an area around the nucleus where you have a high probability of finding it in an electron, and that orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons. And so this is kind of a useful diagram. It sort of shows you the order in which things are filled. And one thing you'll notice, um, well, yeah, you can see that I'm, I'm color coded. All the greens are S sublevels, all the yellows are P sublevels, all the reds are D sublevels, and all the purples are F sublevels. But boxes represent an orbital. So every single S sublevel has one orbital. You can see that all the P's, there are three boxes, boxes because each P sublevel has three orbitals. A D sublevel has five boxes because there are five orbitals. And finally, F sublevels have seven boxes because there are seven orbitals. <coughs> okay, how can you fit two electrons in an orbital? Now we said before that electrons are all negative and like charges repel. So how do you put two things that are negative close together in an orbital? Well, the reason you can do this, or the way you can do this, is because the electrons are actually spinning. And when a charged particle spins, it generates a magnetic field. And so if you look at diagram A at the top, you can see if this is spinning uh, clockwise, the electron is in red, it's spinning clockwise, then that creates a magnetic field where north is at the top and south at the bottom. <coughs> then if you have an electron spinning in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise, that creates a magnetic field that goes in the opposite directions. So the only way that you can get electrons in the same orbital is if they are spinning in opposite directions, which creates opposite magnetic poles, which counteracts the repulsion of the charge. And so you've got to have these electrons spinning in opposite directions. The last thing I want to talk about probably is the, is, is the least important thing in this presentation, but I'll just share it with you anyway, are the shapes of the orbital. So every orbital has a different shape. So the S orbitals are spherical. Think of them as a sphere. The P orbitals are sort of like uh, a dumbbell. They're like two sort of blobs. So what you're seeing in the diagram, that is one um, P orbital. And then lastly, D orbitals have sort of funky shapes, and so that 
drive in there, there are four lobes that represents a d orbital. Now what these, in the center of these is the nucleus, where all those lines cross is where the nucleus is. What these represent are areas where it's highly likely to find electrons, okay? Now, because this is conceptual, you don't have to worry too much about this page, but this <coughs> shows you the three different p orbitals. And so there is like a pz orbital, which is the two vertical lobes. There's a py orbital, which is the two horizontal lobes. And then there is a px orbital, which is the two lobes that are sort of coming in and out of the page. So you can put a total of six electrons on the sublevel. And this sort of combines the first um, three sublevels. So you can see right in the center, the center sphere in yellow would be the 1s, closest to the nucleus. And then a little bit further out is the 2s, which is the larger yellow sphere. And then in blue are the 2p uh, sublevels. So once again, the nucleus is right in the center uh, where the, all the axes meet. Uh, this is a diagram. You can look at these are the different types of d orbitals. You don't need to know this. I just want to sort of show you how crazy it is. Um, and even more crazier are the f sublevels. So we're not going to worry about the shapes of these. Okay, so this has hopefully uh, been understandable to you. So I want you to take some notes on this. And so what we've covered here are the arrangement of electrons, that electrons sit on principal, en principal energy levels. But each of those principal energy levels can be subdivided into sublevels. And that the sublevels can also be subdivided into orbitals. What's really important, though, is that when you look at your periodic table, you can see those principal energy levels and those sublevels. You can recognize them based on the periodic table.